we begin the study of information theory with the measurement of information. Now the whole process of information, quantifying information, began with Claude Shannon, where he is regarded as regarded as the father of information theory. He gave the entire mathematical treatise and based on those principles we shall try to define what or how information can be measured. Now how do I measure information? Now information is basically measured based on its probability of occurrence. Now let's take for example you hear a statement saying that the sun rises in the east. Now there is no much information present. It is not going to be a headline. It is not going to be a breaking news. And it is a sure event. Sun rising in the east is a sure event. And any sure event contains zero information. So the whole process of quantifying information is based on the probability of occurrence of that information or that event, I should say. So sun rises in the east is a sure event and the content or the information content is zero. But whereas, if I get a message that it snows in the southern part of India, then definitely there's a lot of information, isn't it? So it is a very rare event, an event which probably has never happened in hundreds or thousands of years and this is going to be a breaking news and definitely this contains a lot of information. Right? So therefore, information is basically quantified or is measured based on the probability of its occurrence. So therefore, when we try to measure information, here let us consider a source which produces a number of information such as S1, S2 to Sn. Right? So you have a source which produces S1, S2, S3 and so on up to Sn with probabilities P1, P2 and so on up to Pn. So this is a source which produces, let's say they are producing symbols or they are producing an independent sequence of symbols S1, S2 up to Sn with probabilities defined as P1, P2 up to Pn. Okay. So in that case, the information content or the amount of information or the self-information is defined by the expression log 1 by pi. So the self-information of the source si is given by log 1 by pi. So if I want to know the self-information of the symbol s k which has been emitted by the source with probability pk, then it would be, so I have the symbol sk which has been emitted. So the self-information ik is nothing but log 1 by pk. So we find that the amount of information is inversely proportional to the probability of occurrence, isn't it? So for a, uh, let me give you another example. So we know that the temperature of human body is constant. And what happens if the temperature increases, which is not normal? So if the temperature increases, if it is not normal, you would visit a doctor. Or if the temperature goes down, then the normal, then of course you also have to visit the doctor, isn't it? So the same thing happens with the normal heartbeat rate, the normal blood pressure, etc. etc. So something which is very evident, which is a sure event, contains zero information. But if you have an event, whose probability of occurrence is very, very low, then that means such an event contains a lot of information. And that is what has been defined, and that is how we define and measure information. Now, with these discussions, we come across four different observations. So, what are the four observations I make? The first observation what we make is, the information content or the self-information of any message cannot be negative, right? So the information content or the self-information cannot be negative. Now, if it is a sure event, then the probability of occurrence is one. So therefore, the self-information or the information content is zero, but the information content can never be negative. So that is the first point here. The second point is the information content for a sure event is zero. 
So this is for a sure event. The third point is that the information is or the self information is inversely proportional to the probability of occurrence. So this is very evident. So the information is inversely proportional to the probability of occurrence. So therefore, if the probability of occurrence of that event is much lower, then it contains a higher information. And what about the last one? When independent symbols are transmitted. So I have different symbols, say S1, S2 and so on up to Sn. And if the symbols are independent. So what do, what do I mean by saying that the symbols are independent? The, the occurrence of symbol S2 is in no way dependent on S1. Or the occurrence of some symbol Sk is in no way dependent on the previous symbol Sk-1 or any other symbol. So here I have symbols which are completely independent. Then the total self-information is nothing but the summation of all the individual self-informations. So this is a very important expression. So let us assume that the symbols S1, S2 up to Sn are all completely independent. So therefore when I calculate the self-information, so I have the self-information of S1 is I1, then I have I2 and so on up to In. Now we have assumed that all these sources are completely independent. So therefore, the total self-information I is nothing but I add up all the individual self-information. So it's going to be I1 plus I2 and so on up to In. So it's going to be summation of all the self-informations. Of all the individual self-information. Right? So this happens when all the symbols which are being emitted by the source are completely independent of each other. Right? So if they are dependent, then of course you cannot just add all the self-informations. So this is the first video segment on information theory. So where we got to know what information is and how do we measure information and what is self-information where the self-information is given by log 1 by pk. Right? And we also came across these four, right? Where the information cannot be negative. Right? The self-information cannot be negative. If it is a sure event, then the self-information is zero. Of course, the self-information is inversely proportional to its probability of occurrence. And if all the symbols emitted by a given source are completely independent, then what happens? I can find the total self-information by just summing up all the individual self-information. So, so this is what we have understood in this video segment. And in the next video segment, let us see how we can actually quantify the self-information or what is the unit of the self-information. So I've just defined ik equals log 1 by pk. So do I consider log to base e or do I consider log to base 2? And what are its advantages and disadvantages? And what are the relations between each of them? So therefore, we consider log 1 by p k to base 2 or log to base e or log 1 by p k to base 10, which is more suitable what are the units of all of them and is there a relation between all these three so this is what we shall see in the next video segment so make sure that you do like share and subscribe and to view all the other videos in information theory or error control coding do not forget to click on the i icon or go through the playlist information theory and error control coding given in the playlist and thanks for watching